Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, so today, an important video, because this one is a building block for a lot of other videos we're gonna do. This one has to do with distortions uh, caused by harmonics, or harmonics that cause distortion. <laughs> um, anyway, this can be a daunting subject, complex subject, but here at KISS, we're gonna make it simple, okay? We're gonna break it down and hopefully simplify it so after this video you'll have a good idea of what these things are and how to even use your scope to analyze them yourself all right so that's what we're going to do we're going to look at this audio amplifier as an example circuit we're going to look at the screenshots and we're going to look to see what harmonics are okay so what are harmonics and what's the big deal well, harmonics are our frequencies that are multiplications of the frequency of interest. So, they're frequencies you don't want. For instance, your 60 hertz power, when we generate, when we design a power supply and we generate DC voltage off that 60 hertz, we have to convert a sinusoidal, kind of a natural waveform into a DC level, okay? And when we do that, we have to we have to steer that voltage around and we use diodes and what happens is we end up creating some harmonics okay now harmonics can be on current and the voltage can look sinusoidal and doesn't look like you messed with it or vice versa whenever you think you might have a harmonic is when you see a sinusoidal waveform become disrupted basically sharp edges square wave-ish you know you start making a sine wave look a little bit square wave-ish like let's say an audio amplifier you start clip, getting that clipped waveform where the top of the sine wave all of a sudden flattens off and comes down you know you're going to create harmonics from that okay so i'm going to show you how that works and we're going to kind of go back and forth okay you may not know this but a square wave can be made up of a bunch of sine waves Okay, and we're going to show you how that works. So you can basically see how you can create a bunch of harmonics by making your sine wave square wave-ish, or you can take a bunch of sine waves and make a square wave. Okay, so that way you can kind of see how how, how they're how a square wave and si and harmonics are related. And there's a little bit of math, but it's very little. We're going to keep that simple too. Okay, so we're going to jump into this video and by the end of it I think I hope you will have a lot better understanding um, so why is you know why are we worried about this harmonics are our distortions and we don't like distortion so that's why we're worried about it uh, as far as our power rails goes the 60 Hertz if you have a fifth harmonic um, that is five times the frequency of interest 60 Hertz so 5 times 6 okay 300 Hertz at 300 Hertz you can have a some power there that you can have some current basically at 300 Hertz well that doesn't do you any good because your power supply is designed around 60 Hertz so that 300 Hertz is lost power and uh, and it can create heat and it also causes distortions it can Create, it can interrupt other circuits so we don't like that we want to keep our harmonic distortions low and for audio you don't want to hear that so uh, after looking at the waveforms here I think you'll be able to see and when we get into reviewing these DC DC converters back here and these audio amplifiers and I'm talking about harmonic distortion total harmonic distortion uh, total harmonic distortion is just when you add up all those sine waves all those sine waves you don't want all those harmonics and uh, you know you, every multiplication of your waveform you know one two three four you know so you can have even harmonics and odd harmonics now it turns out that the odd harmonics in this case in the case we're going to be talking about today are are the ones that can cause a lot of problems okay so that's what we're going to focus on today and let's jump in this video and give me a thumbs up if this helped you out okay thanks guys appreciate that okay guys so let's go over this test setup for the demonstration here we'll use this class d amplifier 
Um, we're not going to be testing this thing to its ability. Uh, we're only going to put 12 volts in at the rail. This class D will create a plus minus 12 volt. So the signal will not be able to swing quite plus minus 12 volts because there needs to be some headroom. And when we attempt to do that, we're going to see some clipping. It'll kind of square off the top of the waveform. So that's what we're going to see. Now what we're doing is we're going to come into the power on this barrel connector. Okay, plus minus marked on the cool little connector here. And it comes from here and back to the power supply. Set for 12 volts. Uh, and incidentally, I'm going to set the power supply for 2 amp current limit just to have some kind of current limit set in case something bad were to happen. We'll be limited. Okay, now the input signal from the generator is coming in on this cable, this uh, audio cable. It's kind of long because I use it for other things where I need to reach cross bench. But we're just going to plug that in here and it'll. it's only been powered on the right channel from my uh, generator, okay? The Sigma um, function generator. And it comes in this coax, breaks out in this red and black wire to the cable there, to the right channel, to the shield. And the scope is tied to the same place and it's in times 10 position. So we'll set the scope for times 10 up here. Okay, so now for the output, it'll come out of this, um, this side here. The left side would be over here. And the center ones, are also input power so instead of coming in here we could come into the terminal block I just did this way to separate things a little bit so we come out the right channel green and yellow and it wraps around to this red and black um, alligator jaw which connects to the resistor the load 8 ohm 200 watt uh, capability and it's pretty non-inductive resistor got that on Amazon a lot of this stuff I got on Amazon actually, but almost, probably everything I guess, but anyway, I also have a coax coming in here, tied to the output, and this is to the Keithley meter where I can read total harmonic distortion, THD, and then we have our, our other scope probe tied here. This is our differential probe because the output is isolated from the input, so use an isolation probe here. This is a you know, differential probe, it's an isolation probe. So it's on times 10 position, also has times 50, times 200, and off. And the light will come in here if we ever overdrove it, and the power light's on right now. So this is going to the leads here, and then it's powered by a little wall wart over on the wall. That's what this cable is for, and this cable is going to the scope. Okay, so we'll set the scope for times 20. Hey, uh, and by the way, I did a video on this little isolation transformer board. This is an audio isolation transformer. There's actually two of them, left and right channel. So this is a way to get around using a, an expensive differential probe. Although this is relatively inexpensive compared to the big brand stuff that's it's way less money. But this is even way less <laughs> than that. So this isolation guy you can come in with your generator here on one side and come out the other side to your board and that way you can put your scope probe over on the input side over here and you're not tying your ground on your board on your input to your output when you get your two scope probes hooked up. Okay, So the isolation transformer will let you bring your generator ground basically to your output ground but that's okay because you know it's isolated from the input. All right. So I have a video on how to use this in case you want to see that. Okay, so for the generator setup, I got it on uh, frequency is 1 kHz. And right now we got 4 volts peak to peak. We want to go less than that. Let's go 0 0.1 uh, volt RMS. Whoops, that's millivolts. 0 0.1 volt RMS. All right, so that's that setup. Now down here we have the Keithley THD meter, so I put it in THD mode, that's that button there. And then with THD, um, go to measurement, and see right here, if I go to THD, I can go THD plus N. That is THD plus noise. Now if I stay at THD, harmonics, two. So let's say we want to go to, uh, you know, 12 harmonics. We want to go a lot more than that. We want to capture 
all the way up to 12 harmonics. That's 12 times 1K, so 12K. So we could even go higher. I don't think we are going to see much, but anyway, let's just go there. Okay, we'll enter that and exit. So that's how we set up the THD. And I will go to THD plus noise, so you, now you can see where I get that from. Okay, so that was the BNC to banana for the input of this guy. And this guy just goes BNC directly. All right, and this is the power supply, so I just have it set for 12 volts. And you can enter 12 volts set and current set for 2 amps limit. And then when I get ready, I can hit this, so power up the board, and then it'll show me how much current I have, and there's the voltage. So if it were a short circuit, it, the 12 voltage would go to zero and the current would go to 2 amps. So okay, now let's go to the scope. All right, now for the scope setup. We got the scope probe times 10 coming into channel one. So let's set that up. DC, one meg, invert off, full bandwidth, and 10X probe setting. Great. So channel two is the differential probe, and it's set for times 20, which is great. So, yep, voltage times 20. Okay, cool. So that's all set up. Now, right now, channel one is one volt um, per division. We could probably go to half a volt per division there. That's our input signal. And the output is set for four volts. Let's go to, all right, we'll keep it four volts for now. Four volts uh, per division. And then one millisecond per division for time base. And, uh, Okay, frequencies below two hertz because nothing's going on. So I just push these two guys just to verify they're both set in the center of the screen. See, channel one right there. So I just push it, brings it right there. The trigger says it's on channel one, rising edge, zero volts, and DC. So I can just verify that, hitting that, channel one, DC, rising edge, zero. See, here's there it is right there. You can see the cursor actually when you push this in it puts it at zero I'll just maybe bring it up a little bit for fun and the center of the cursor in the horizontal is in the middle right there okay looks like we're good to go all right so let's look at our signal okay so I've got the power supply turned on I'm gonna turn on the output of the generator and there we go so our inputs yellow and the outputs are blue now let's zoom in to where we see some clipping. Okay, so I've zoomed the camera in so you can watch the peaks of the output. Looks nice and sinusoidal, right? I'm gonna spread it out so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, here we go. I'm at where our total harmonic distortion right now is 0.039, pretty low. We're coming up. We're still at 0.04 distortion, looking good. Okay, right there, we jumped up from 0.05 to 0.79 so you can see that we're getting some flat top there we're starting to hit the top of our power supply rail so you can see the peak to peaks 22.8 volts and we have 12 volts going in so we're hitting the rails see now I'm gonna go over to the power supply and just bring the volts from 12 to 14 and you'll see that get smooth again actually I just went to 13 and it cracked it up so I'm gonna go back to 12 because that's what we're trying to see is the flat top okay so now that's 0.07 or I'm sorry that's 0.7 actually it's about 0.799 so it's about 0.8 go one more notch up that there's two percent distortion okay so now let's see what kind of harmonics that's creating now the one thing I want to point out let me spread this out a little bit so you can see really well as it's as it starts to hit the you know, it starts the flat top there, you see some ringing, and you see some ringing here. You know, that's a high frequency signal there and here. So as this clipping, you know, thing happens, flat topping, you know, where the waveform's clipping, it's coming up, ramming into the voltage rails, uh, it's causing this noise, and our distortion's up to 2%. Now, I'm going to change our distortion to... Uh, THD plus noise. Let me go to measure. Let me change that. Okay, that's THD plus noise. And it's uh, 
and even 2%. So it didn't really change too much because we're reading quite a bit of harmonics. So it's pretty much all harmonics. Okay, now what we're going to do is go to the spectrum again. But I'm going to need to see a lot of waveforms again. I'm going to go 5 milliseconds. That usually works well for the spectrum. For, uh, audio spec for the audio spectrum. Uh, 5 milliseconds. So now if I go to math, can't really see it in there. I'll have to shrink the waveforms down so we can see them. And let me see where we are. FFT. Oh good, we're still set. It's 9.9. .9. I'll make that 10K. Okay, 10K and 2K per division. So let me move these waveforms. I'm going to pull them up this time. Okay, so this is actually channel 1. And we see our input signal. We just see this noise we saw before. So generator's not too bad. Now let's go to channel 2. See the output. Shoot. Okay, I'm going to have to I'm going to move these back down. All right, there we go. So there's the uh, frequency there, and then there's the odd harmonics. Now there's also some of these even harmonics, and I think that's some of that noise that was from the generator to begin with. So this is basically a sign of us taking a sine wave and, you know, turning it into a squarish wave and creating all these harmonics from the square wave. Now I'm going to drop the amplitude the input signal down again and you'll see uh, okay there's an improvement it's 0.9 percent distortion now we're back to 0.08 so you can see we're just back to where we were before so that's 0.08 percent and that's uh, two percent right there now i could go up to 10 percent show you how bad it gets and that's 10 percent distortion so you see all the odd harmonics now it's interesting that um that they're not all dropping like they would if it was an actual square wave. So, but you know, it's becoming square wave-ish, right? All right, guys, we're gonna uh, set up the generator so we can try to build a square wave with just using two of the harmonics, the fundamental and the third harmonic, okay? So one kilohertz and three kilohertz. So channel one is set up to generator one and channel two these two cables just go to the back of the scope. Generator 1 and 2 outputs for channel 1, channel 2. And let's see, we go to options button. Generator, generator 1 setup, sine wave, setup for sine wave. Got all those choices. And amplitude, okay, so frequency is 1 kilohertz. And amplitude is 1.273. Uh, okay. So then let's go back to generator two. And that set up a sine wave. And it set up at three kilohertz. And it set up as 424 millivolts. I'll explain those things. Basically, those two levels are the levels that you have as the harmonics in a square wave for the fundamental and the third harmonic. Okay, so uh, let's turn those on. Let's go to output. Generator 1, turn that on. That's our 1 kilohertz. Generator 2, turn that on. There's our 3 kilohertz. Turn off the menus. Okay, so there we go. Um, 4.46 volts RMS and 2.98 volts RMS. Okay, so I just want to spread this waveform out a little bit. If you look at it and you think about the zero crossing being across center here, so this is the negative part of the waveforms and the plus part of the waveforms. If you're adding these two waveforms together, you're basically subtracting this waveform from this one. Now, I don't have them on the same volts per division. Maybe if I change it, it'll make it a little more obvious. Okay, that's 500, they're both set up 500 millivolts per division now. So if you imagine subtracting this Part, this little part underneath the negative away from this it's gonna drop this down but then you're adding this to this yellow one so it's going to push this up and it's gonna make it a little bit steeper here and then come over so you know where you have the the plus pulses you're gonna see you know pushing up and the negative is gonna be pulling down okay let's just turn on the math and look at it okay there's the math here let me um, let's 
increase amplitude so we can see a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So you can see how that works out, right? And you can see how this gets steeper, you know, because of the way it adds. Now, the thing is, is you always know, again, where that you have odd harmonics when they both cross zero at the same point. So you see that starting to look a little bit more of a square wave. It's kind of a funky one, but hey, we're only, this is only two signals. So if we took the fifth harmonic and added two more bumps, we could make this a little bit sharper and would basically be adding a little bit more bump to the left side of this one, a little bit more to the right side and subtracting one from the center. So you can see how adding enough sine waves eventually makes a square wave. All right guys, I think you're getting an idea of this. Uh, I hope. Uh, so this harmonics and distortion and what I'm doing is I'm talking about how we build a square wave with sine waves or we break down a sine wave by making it look square wave-ish by clipping which creates more sine waves. So a square wave can be built with a bunch of sine waves and a single sine wave if you try to make it look like a square wave you can actually create these other uh, sine waves, these other harmonics. What I did here is I just drew three of them. This is the fundamental or, or the first harmonic if you want to say it that way. Then there's the even harmonics. We're ignoring those. The reason why is the odd harmonics all cross zero at the same time. The even harmonics will end up canceling out. But the odd harmonics, because they cross zero at the same time, they end up building on each other. So, I'm sorry about my drawing. It looks pretty bad. But if you take this and the third harmonic, then you can see how, you know, on the scope, we saw how taking these two waveforms kind of got a square wave-ish kind of thing, kind of a lumpy square wave. But if we add the fifth harmonic, you can see how many more bumps we get. And so if you imagine taking how we took the fundamental and the third harmonic together, made kind of a square wave-ish. Now if you ignore that and just look at the relationship of the third and fifth, basically it looks the same as the fundamental and the third, right? And then the fifth to the seventh would look just like the third to the fifth. So you just keep on doubling the bumps and when you get three bumps right here rising up here, you get you start getting this edge coming up. Then instead of those lobes we get up here, we're, we're getting some cancellation with these negative ones. So all these ones below this line, these are all negative and they, and they subtract from what we see on top. Now that's for this half the waveform, of course. This half, it's the opposite. So for this half, these guys cancel from this guy. So now the equation for the square wave thing with all these harmonics looks something like this. This is, this first term is the fundamental. And the, the thing, the sine with this thing, that's, that has to do with frequency, okay? That's a sine wave and it's a two pi thing with frequency and time. So that's how you plot this. But what's before the sine is the amplitude of the voltage. So now the second term is the third harmonic and it has, instead of a four over pi, it's four thirds over pi. So basically it's one third of this. And then the frequency is multiplied by three because it's the third harmonic, it's three times faster. So this is, so each one of these terms is is one of these harmonics and each term is broken down into an amplitude component and a frequency component. The third term here has five times F, the next one would be seven times F, then nine times F, and so on. The frequencies just go up by odd harmonics, by odd multiple um, multiplication numbers. So and the and under here it gets divided the same way. This is one third, this is one fifth and it all is 
one third or one fifth of four over pi. Now this term here is going to be the peak of the amplitude and what we want to do is find the RMS value. So the total harmonic distortion is you add up all these harmonics so if you're able to take a voltmeter and read the RMS value it would look kind of like this expression down here. The VRMS let me zoom in it'd be this term right here. It'd be THD would be equal to the RMS voltages without the fundamental. So if you could take a voltmeter, like my Keithley THD meter, basically it, it filters out the fundamental and takes all the, the RMS voltage of the other sine waves and then divides it by the value of the fundamental. And that's the proportion, that's the harmonic distortion percentage of all that other stuff compared to the signal you want. Now this equation is basically this and this guy. So it's taking this the voltage portion of this waveform and putting it in here and squaring it and then taking the square root getting the RMS value. The root means squared. So you square it and then you take the root. Now the difference between the terms here in here is I have a square uh, I have a two squared down here right because that's the amplitude divided by square root of two that's to get the RMS value of the voltage the amplitude of each one of these sine waves okay so that, that's what that's doing and then that's divided by the fundamental four over pi but with the square root of two so I hope that kind of makes a little sense you see these equations if you look at Fourier transforms and that, and they kind of look a little bit daunting, I think. You know, a lot of math. But if you kind of get just of where it's coming from, I think that helps understand this. Hey guys, I hope that helped. Um, you can see where sine waves come from that you don't want, and you can see how um, you see how they're created, right? And and also I, you can see how to use your FFT how to look at those okay and we're going to spend a little more time on actually looking at the value of those things and videos to come and we're going to learn more about this so this is just kind of an intro and as we move on you'll learn more and more about how to use your scope and how to do this analysis and uh, so I hope this was a good step towards that direction hey give me a thumbs up if that helped you guys thanks a lot